let's talk about the latest from XR Access. So, sure, you want to start by just giving us kind of the overview of what sure. XR Access is for anybody who wandered in here off the street? Yeah, yeah. So we wanted to we wanted to give an overview of XR Access and also to uh, make sure that everyone's on the same page as far as our goals. Uh, and also get some of your thoughts as to what to do next. Uh, because XR Access is not just us, it's a, it's a community of people and we're doing this to further the field. So having said that, XR Access is a research initiative at Cornell Tech. And we are focused on the accessibility for people with disability or for disabled people of augmented and virtual reality technologies. And specifically, we're looking at how we can make the mainstream technologies accessible to everyone. So uh, back in 2019, I was doing some research on using smart glasses in particular as tools for people with visual impairments, with low vision specifically. And what I found was that there were quite a few people that were excited about using these new platforms as assistive technologies. But at the same time, I myself was completely unable to develop any prototypes on them. I wasn't able to even launch the applications that we were developing to try them out. I really needed to have sighted students with me to do the work, uh, get the headsets ready, and then hand them to me with an accessible prototype so that I could try it out and give them feedback. Um, no one was really working on the problem of making the platforms themselves, the existing applications accessible to people with disabilities. So that's when we decided to launch XR Access and to try and push forward this idea of this question of how can we make XR an emerging set of technologies accessible to people with disabilities. There are lots of open questions here, really fascinating questions about how you can do this. A lot of what we know about making technologies accessible on mobile devices, on desktop and laptop computers that are very screen based, a lot of what we know about those technologies and accessibility and in those contexts is not readily applicable to interactions in 3D with augmented and virtual reality technologies. So this is a very exciting space, lots of interesting research problems, and also lots of questions about how to take that emerging resource, research and really push it into practice. We want to make sure that we are thinking about accessibility from the ground up before augmented and virtual reality technologies are completely mainstreamed in our culture. So we don't want to get to the point, in other words, where uh, with smartphones, for example, everyone was using a smartphone for work, for play, for leisure, for you know, social connection, and smartphones were still not accessible to people. And then accessibility was added on retroactively. Uh, and of course, we know that when it's added retroactively, it's never as good. So with XR Access, we want to flip the script. We want to think about accessibility now. Absolutely. And so to do that, we have uh, a whole host of research that we conduct here at Cornell Tech, um, some of which you heard about yesterday. Uh, we have a number of things as well for connecting the people that are doing the research. Um, our research network is currently at 29 researchers and counting. Uh, this is our effort to gather up an understanding of who is working on this in this field, what are they doing, and how can we all be working together and not just working in isolation. Um, so you can expect a lot more from our research network in the next year in terms of finding better ways to collaborate, uh, ways to spotlight the, the amazing work that is happening right now, um, and make sure that the knowledge that's being generated is getting into the places it can do some good. Um, we also have a number of things to support everybody else out there that's working on XR uh, applications and help them make their work accessible. Uh, we have our GitHub page, uh, which has now 80 plus resources for specifically designers and developers uh, from all over the web. Uh, and I'm proud to announce we have a new and improved uh, resources page on our own XR Access website. Um, huge shout out to Allison Cassells for, uh, for supporting us with that, um, where you can find all kinds of uh, reports and presentations and more information for everybody from you know, purchasers to teachers uh, to anybody else that's that's working with XR, uh, you can find support on how to make sure that what you're doing is inclusive. Um, we've also had some fantastic uh, seminars and presentations. 
uh, our community discussions as well. Um, you know, as you see on the screen here, we had uh, just last month, I think, scene weaving for Microsoft, where Microsoft Research uh, came and presented, uh, I think, the most advanced kind of VR screen reader I've ever seen. Um, so it was fantastic to be able to help them to view that. Uh, we had our uh, brain computer interface talk with Cognition a little while before that. Um, we also had some fantastic community discussions with our partners at the XR Association, uh, where just like our breakout discussions, you all can help uh, inform the answers on things that we don't even know yet as a community because all of this tech is so new and moving so fast. Uh, we've also had some great work collaborating with standards organizations. Um, I'm proud to announce that, that we have officially formed an exploratory working group with the Metaverse Standards Forum on accessibility in the metaverse uh, in order to bring together all the, the kind of best minds out there uh, in order to help form the standards that will be the you know, WCAG 2.2 equivalent for XR. Uh, we also advise on the FCC uh, Blind Gaming Advisory Committee. Um, we support the W3C uh, Immersive Captions Group and WebXR Group uh, and the IEEE Global Initiative on Ethics of Extended Reality. Um, finally, we have uh, done a number of things, other things in terms of advocacy to, to try to make sure that the message of accessibility and the importance of accessibility isn't lost in all of the other, you know, excitement and hype about XR technology. Um, earlier this year in March, uh, we were at IEEE VR. Um, shout out to, to Greg here in the audience, who's a, a major part of that as well as general chair. Um, we helped co-sponsor a workshop on diversity, equity, accessibility, transparency, and ethics in XR. Um, we also, I was fortunate enough to serve as the uh, DEIA chair on that, uh, and sure you give a, a wonderful keynote on the importance of XR accessibility. Uh, additionally, in uh, April, we were uh, based to have the opportunity to work with Meta on a co-design session that you'll hear more about soon. Um, and later on uh, this month, about two weeks from now, after I go home and sleep for a week, uh, we're going to be uh, speaking at AWE. We have a panel on uh, general how generative AI can make XR creation more accessible. Um, and then in August, we'll be at DEF CON to talk about XR for all, accessibility and privacy for disabled users. Um, but as Shira was saying, XRS isn't just us here on the stage, it's all of us. This is where I remember to do these slides, not just my slides. <laughs> um, we really want to hear from you uh, about, you know, what possibilities excite you this year? Uh, what do you want a need in order to succeed in making your own, uh, furthering your research or making your applications accessible. Um, what, how can, how can XR Access support you in those efforts? Uh, and what does your dream future for XR look like? Um, so yeah, I think we want to hear from you and hear from you right now. We have uh, Mike, we should have microphone, some uh, volunteers on microphone duty, I hope. Um, and, um, yeah, it help, help, let's let's talk. We have a, a few minutes now because I think we're we've got um, Justin coming on momentarily, uh, but we want to hear from you. Um, anybody want to shout out just what? I mean, even what brought you here today? What's what's exciting for you? What are you what are you hoping to see over the next year when it comes to the the future of XR? And we'll take uh, questions on Zoom as well or comments. Hi, I'm Angela Chan from Coastal National Lab in the UK. Um, we're just starting our national lab and we're thinking about how XR, how XR comes together with AI and digital humans. So I'm excited and terrified by the possibilities of AI in the creative industries and output. And I'm interested in how we can work with uh, particularly generative AI to provide training sets with better representation. Because at the moment, if you say show me an inclusive office, you get a bunch of wheelchairs, sometimes empty, in little parking bays, looking up at the office they can't access. And if you say, please add ramps, you get roller coasters. So I think how we start to work with that as, you know, expert consumers is really exciting, uh, but we need to lean in and put pressure. Absolutely. And I, I think um, gathering better data, you know, you've heard the phrase garbage in, garbage out. Right, I think being able to get get um, better data that isn't just the the you know wheelchair stock photos, 
um, to fuel that, to fuel things like, you know, yesterday with sign language, we're talking about the need for, for a lot more data in sign language to train those models. Um, I think all of that is definitely really vital. Yeah, so, some, so for example, just to tie this back into what we're doing at XR Access, a topic like that could potentially be one of our seminars, one of our community discussions that we hold every few months over Zoom. Uh, so if anybody else is interested in that topic, let us know, either now or via one of our other communication channels, email Slack. Yeah, because we, we don't have all the answers, right? We are here to find you who have the answers and shine a spotlight on you and really take the, the incredible research that you all have done um, and get it where it needs to go. Uh, I think we had a question in the front. Sure. Uh, as somebody who's blind, um, I'm looking forward to the, I guess, evolution of this all. I mean, even just here this morning, I got dropped off. I said, hey, Siri, get me walking directions to the Verizon building. And I got, here's some search results from the web. Not very useful. So uh, looking forward to the next step as I've been following uh, AI and XR as things become more advanced and things start occurring in real time, it's uh, for somebody who is blind uh, and part of the tech community, it's uh, unbelievably extremely exciting time. Absolutely. Things are, I think, moving faster than they have been in, in a while, and that's saying something. Um, I think we maybe have time for one more question or comment before we uh, give Justin some time here in the back. Yeah, I think one of the um, uh, use cases that I'm really interested to see evolve is, again, the the confluence of, of Gen AI and XR. And in particular, um, you know, some of our clients are in um, lower connectivity situations um, and there's so much, um, there's a lot of potential in on-device uh, Gen AI models that can do some of the real time processing that doesn't require cloud connection and can you know fall back or phone home when it when it exceeds its capacity for on device. Um, and I, I think seeing the use cases that evolve out of the you know next year or so of silicon that's uh, able to be incorporated into the the headsets and how those Gen AI use cases can really unlock some. Um, uh, some new things that uh, that solve problems uh, in low connectivity situations. Absolutely. And in terms of privacy, uh, the more stuff we can keep on device, um, the more we can be certain that uh, we're not being listened in on and whatnot. Yes, that's a very good point. And I think privacy is a theme that we've heard come up yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely one we'll be exploring in the coming year. Let's keep the conversation going. So feel free to let us know what are you excited about? What are you interested in seeing both personally in your own work and also in general ideas for the community? How can we bring this field forward? How can we push the research for it and bring it into practice while connecting with advocates and the people, the disabled people themselves? Um, so let us know what are, should we remind people of our? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can always reach out to us on Slack, uh, extraaccess.org slash Slack. Um, you can email us info at xraccess.org um, and we're on uh, Twitter and LinkedIn. So feel free to reach out um, if you know of somebody that's doing great research in this area that, that we should be sharing, uh, send them our way because we'll be happy to connect to, to anyone and everyone that's working on XR accessibility.